experiment begins. Have you ever suffered from depression? Uh, no, I've felt depressed, but in what way? Um, what I mean is I've been sad, but not depressed. No. There's a difference. Yeah, well, it's an illness, isn't it? Well, well, you tell me. I mean, I haven't got an abnormal amount of chemical in the brain or anything. And that's depression. Yeah. I've seen a girl here before. Oh, do you do this a lot then? A little bit, it's weird. I guess I never really thought about it. I just assumed women were more, no, no, less inclined to uh... have things put inside their bodies. <laughs> um, so it's... Well, you're obviously alright with that sort of thing. Oh, mind your own. I am. Admissions procedure. First 25 milligram dosage of agent RLU 37, given at timed intervals. As of today, January 31st, 2020. Those are really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does, does your man mind doing this? My man? No, I do what I like. <laughs> oh, of course you do. It's all Beyonce, an independent woman and all. Uh, yeah, it's a waste. Are so. you away for work? Uh, no. Stag do? No. Is he inside? Um, <laughs> no. He's visiting family. All oh, right. But not with you, though. Uh, no, with friends. Oh. Um, 
with his son from the hall. Nice. So are you happy? With what? Are you happy with him? Oh, don't do that. Do what? That, that thing that guy said. No, I'm talking about Because what I actually said, yes, I'm perfectly confident. No, no, some people do. Some people, yeah. What? I am. What? Happy. <laughs> Dr. James. Yes? I just thought that you should know that I know about some of the procedures. And I don't know if it matters. But I just thought you should know. No. In most cases, being aware of your own bias doesn't actually mean you can affect that bias, really. Yes, it's one of life's tragedies. Now I'll tell you the scenario. You can hear it a total of two times. Okay. You open up a dry cleaners on the border between two towns. Your shop is the only one of its kind in the surrounding area. Within your first year of business, the population doubles. And reactions from your customers indicate that the cleaning is of good quality. Okay. Your business prospers, and you wonder about applying to the bank for a loan to open up a chain of such shops. As you had expected, the bank approves your loan. <laughs> Go me. <laughs> <laughs> now a quick memory test. So, what was the nature of your business? Was it A. Dry cleaners or B. Green grocers? A. And where was your shop set up? Was it A. In the centre of the town? On the border between two towns. Okay, and what was the reason for your business success? Was it A, lack of competition, or B, a good business plan? Um, well, you didn't say it, so am I now me, am I the dry cleaner? Remembering <laughs> the story I just told you, what was the reason for your success? Um, wait, wait, so, so I have to tell you why my business succeeded? We have an answer, please, Colin. Afterwards, will you tell me why? Why? I'm a psychology student. Right, then you can work it out for yourself. What was the reason for your success? Well, A, lack of competition. May as well, there'll be like a hundred factors in this fictional town's economy. Okay. So if I said my business plan, then what? Well, then I'd be taking responsibility for the success. Exactly. Whereas, lack of competition, well, that's nothing to do with me. That's like external. Right. So, so what's this got to do with the trial? People prone to depression, Tony, they tend to attribute success to external factors and failure to internal ones. What would a normal mind do? The so-called healthy mind. The healthiest mind would think if things go right, that's down to me. I did that. But if things go They've wrong... They've been unlucky. Victim of circumstance, yeah. How do you feel? Oh, fine. A bit tense of like something's going to happen, but um, Tristan said the same. Well, the agents didn't design to increase levels of dopamine, right. so there'll be a lot of that sloshing about. There's an old joke. Right, so there's this medic at a conference, and he's fallen for this girl who hasn't looked twice at him. Now, obviously, she knows, and he knows, that dopamine is the initial trigger for falling in love, but also that dopamine is stimulated by new, exciting experiences, generally. So, in order to win the girl, he sets up a sort of chemical reaction, and he arranges for them to go bungee jumping. And they get there, and they look over this beautiful green valley. And then the instructor ties them together and they plunge head forth and it's beautiful and their dopamine levels go wild. And eventually, they get lifted back onto the bridge. He has his arms wrapped round her and he looks longingly into her eyes and says, wasn't that amazing? And she says, yes. And wasn't the instructor handsome? <laughs> it's sort of a science joke. Oh, so no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the instructor That's who she's. <laughs> this is very good, isn't it? I'm not sure it's good or bad, it's just the case. Well done. Different from what you're used to, I bet. Different. Easier. Different. Elevator moved. Yes. Increased energy levels. Yes. Weight loss. 
And increased height? And it's two centimetres. Height? Doesn't seem likely. Well, I'm not raising the floors. I didn't think we were even I'm monitoring height. I monitor everything. I see that. Yeah. And why are you doing psychological tests of this quantity? It's a phase one physical. Well, everything's physical in the end, isn't it? There's really no need. Just stick to protocol. An antidepressant effect in healthy volunteers. That, that's pretty extraordinary. Barely a week in. They know they're being given an antidepressant. It's with mostly their own expectation, surely. Well, it could be. But the new design is fast acting, yeah. so... Sorry, I just assumed it would be psychological. You lost objectivity. Quite right there. It's good to see you, Lorne. I mean, I know I saw you at the... But I mean alone. You look really well. Well, I should say thank you for all of this. <coughs> I know it wasn't, it's very I good. Don't even, it's just great to see you. For you to be here, you know how it is. You could do with a pair of fresh eyes, it's a pushy area. Rightly so. But believe me, I don't want to spend five weeks in a trial that gets discredited. It's why we're developing new generations of ADs in the first place. Will I read your advice on the government on psychopharmaceuticals at the moment? No, I'm on a panel. I'm not. I keep expecting to see you on a TED talk ha! or something. No, I. They have asked, actually. No, I'm saving that for the day I write that book. And how are you? How are the kids? Great, thank you. Yes, I. I got engaged. Oh, congratulations. Yes, and divorced. I should probably say that the other way around. <laughs> Congratulations again. Thanks. I, I realised that should have happened a while ago. Well, it must have been hard. No. For the best. It's all good. It's really good to see you looking so well, though. Bye. And you. We're due to escalate dosage tomorrow. I'll come back for the scans, but I'll sign on first dosage increase now, if you're happy. Dosage increase. 50 milligrams. <laughs> Glamorous, could it? A man coming on with a bucket? I'm Toby. I'm a psychiatrist, I'm afraid. My father was a heart surgeon. When I told him I wanted to specialise in psychiatry, he said, Oh, really? Cinderella of medicine. Which, um. <laughs> because Dad thought psychiatry was nonsense about Freud and everything being motivated by our parents. But I was determined to prove him wrong. But seriously, I do think I vanquished my father in a way because, you know, I didn't want to be a heart surgeon. I didn't want to be a plumber of the body. I, I wanted to be an explorer. When the brain goes wrong, there are symptoms and there are physical causes, as with anything else. We're happy to have a heart transplant, a liver transplant, but, but we can't imagine a brain transplant. Because nowadays we think our soul is in there. But that sense of us is only a small part of what's going on at any given moment. As you sit listening to me, your brain is generously taking care of the basics to keep you alive. Uh, breathing, your heart pumping. But it's also regulating other things, so you don't have to be consciously aware of them. Your temperature. Ignoring the sound of other people breathing, but forcing food through your gut, positioning your spinal column in your seat, which doesn't look terribly comfortable, I'm sorry. <laughs> Swallowing so you don't choke on your saliva. Actively thinking about these things doesn't help, but the brain is taking care of it. We need to consider mental health the same way we do the bodily kind, because it is the bodily kind. Depression is fast becoming the biggest cause of disability in the world. And this is why medical intervention is so important. Its love and its trust means that people do not lose their jobs or their children when they have a bout of depression. 
the psychopharmacological revolution is the most important occurrence in medicine in my lifetime. And I'm proud to have been a part of that. Well, my father lived just long enough to see it, but what got him in the end was up here. In one of his more lucid moments, he decided to donate his brain to science for teaching and research into this field. So thank you, Dad. <laughs> Thanks to people like you, the Cinderella of medicine got to go to the ball. step forward with this leg, now I'm going to go back, back to the middle, and this way, yeah, 
Go nice and slow first. Come on, speed up, speed up. Loosen up. Keep going, keep going. Oh, thank God. Where have you been? I thought I'd have to call the police. Sorry, what's going on? Uh, are you okay? Yes, fine, sorry. Did you climb out of the window? No. Um, the fire, fire escape. Yeah. Was there a fire? No, we were just going a little bit mad. Well, you're going a little bit mad in here by the looks of it. Sorry, I didn't realise I was in charge of a bunch of school kids. Mm -hmm. You signed a protocol. We haven't done anything to mess with the trial. You have no idea what you've done. Have you been smoking? It stinks a bit. All right, yeah, but we're not in school, so you don't need to be a bitch Chris, about it. nicotine will inflate your dopamine levels, which are already elevated by the agent. I'm <laughs> sorry if my trial, that you're being paid to do, is getting in the way of your moves. <laughs> Honey, mm -hmm. you came here of your own accord, presumably. Yes. Just to be clear, you have signed a consent form committing to refraining from sexual activity. Oh, no, 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 not, not, not that we've done anything, you know, other than what you just saw. Yeah, you perv. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> you can't disappear with powerful psychiatric medication coursing through you. I'm responsible for your safety. Sorry. Sorry. We have fMRIs tomorrow, so please just go and rest your brains. Suppressed appetite, but inability to sleep. Exactly. Exactly. Don't really understand what you're exactly in. If the agent is causing all of these symptoms, why on earth wouldn't they assume they were infatuated? Look at it objectively. The agent is designed to avoid emotional dampening we normally see with antidepressants. Well, well it makes sense that emotions would be heightened. We're looking at normal minds. You know what I mean? Depression is categorised by deadness of emotion, right? Insularity, lack of engagement with the world, and those around you. But what does that sound like? Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> what does it sound like? I'm pretty sure it's not drug effect, Toby. Seems to me you're stressing the chemical nature of things for my benefit. No, but, but okay, yes, equally. If you have a chemical imbalance that makes you Sleep all the time, feel lethargic, oh, have trouble focusing. Well, of course, you're going to eventually feel depressed. You asked 
somebody about their history of depression. They don't say, oh, I felt tired one day. They say, I lost my job. I lost my wife. These are external Everybody loses effects, their okay. job. Everybody loses their wife. No, they don't, Toby. It's about an interaction with the world. It doesn't just appear. Now, I know this depression as disease thing is good for business. But don't. Don't say that in front of me. And don't say that in front of me. I was a clinical psychiatrist at Bath for 10 years while you were greasing your way up the ladder. Why would you grease a ladder? You know what I mean. We know you went there for most of those 10 years. You don't know that at all. I'm sorry, that's not the point. You don't. And it's irrelevant. Are you interested in why I don't think it's drug effect? Of course, but what do you think I'm interested in? Thank you, Doctor. I'm glad you asked. Because number seven here is on placebo. Not even on your drug. Showing all those physical symptoms and apparent antidepressant effects. Ah. <laughs> yes. Ah. So that's definitely not your drug. On placebo. Yes. So with one of them, the effect is entirely natural. Dosage increase, 100 milligrams. Sleep! Sleep to the weak! I feel like I might never sleep again. 